Now I go ahead and put the fitting nut itself, the receiver end of the fitting where the tube slips into, into a vise so I can go ahead and feed the tube in. I don't use any tape on the end of there or anything like that. You just need to make sure that all the wires aren't flared out like this line is. They need to be uniform, slim, tight against that rubber so they're not sticking out and fighting you trying to go into the fitting. Now you just go ahead and feed that rubber into the fitting until it butts up against the shoulder down in the actual nut itself. It's a little hard to see in this image here, but that thing is fed in there properly, seated up against that shoulder. Now I take my new assembly of the hose and that nut and I flip it over into the vise in the soft jaws. It is a good course of action to take this fitting and put a little bit of clean oil on there or specific assembly lube so that when you assemble it, it goes together easier, slips into the rubber and threads easier. Now, personally, I always just use a regular chrome wrench that has a nice clean face surface on it. There are specific AN wrenches, but I personally don't use them or even own them. I have found that over the years, as long as I am careful and using a quality chrome wrench, I don't tear up these fittings and I don't damage them when using them properly and carefully. Now we just tighten that thing down until shoulder meets shoulder. Shoulder of the fitting meets the shoulder of the nut. I always make sure to index it so that they are lined up nice and clean and smooth so you don't have a point offset from a point. You can see the fitting right here. I've got it lined up pretty nicely so that it looks uniform and like it's meant to be there. That's the way they are machined so that they line up properly. You should tighten it to the point where they line up properly.